In this lesson, we'll be looking at the concept of rendering lists in React component, and we're going to see how this concept allows us to avoid certain repetitions that we might have in our code. So this is where we stopped in our previous lesson, and this is to what we are trying to replicate this design from Dribbble. First thing first, as you already know, run your development server. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous lesson, you can find the code for this lesson in the video description below. For the previous lessons, you can find the code in the video descriptions of the previous lessons. The concept of rendering list. Before I get into that, let me show you something. I'm going to comment everything we have in pricing card here. I'm going to make this smaller for now. So in React, if I want to have a string, hello, I can easily say hello. If I want to have a string, hi, I can easily say hi. And if we check the DOM, you see here we have hello hi just the way i have it here but i could also choose to put this in an array so i could have an array like this and then i have hello and the second item i have hi but this is then going to show the square bracket because i haven't told react that i am talking about javascript arrays i'm not talking about the normal square bracket so if i should wrap this in curly bracket which means i want to add a javascript expression into my jsx and this is going to be treated as a javascript array and you can see what react does here is that it combines these two items together let me zoom in a bit i would remember to zoom out later we have hello hi and if you come to the dom you have hello and you have hi and you could even have more figures you could have six nine and react is going to combine all of that hello hi six nine you can see it here hello hi six nine but now you're probably thinking why would you want to use an array when you could just type the text directly or well, let me show you that now let's say i break all of these items so that each of them has their own line instead of having an array of strings and numbers here i can have an array of gsx elements what do i mean by this for this hello i can put it in p for this high i can put it in span for this six i can put it in h2 and for this nine i can put it in div so here i have an array of four gsx elements and you can see if i zoom out you can see the four gsx elements if you're wondering why they are in columns like this is because from our previous lesson we have a grid for the price Prizes. This has three columns, and so by adding styles dot prizes, then these four elements are now treated as items. And if you come to the DOM, you can see we have our P, we have our span, we have our H2, and we have our div. Again, you are still thinking, why can't I just put all of this outside? Why do I need to put it in the array? Well, let me show you an example. Let's say everything here was a P. So here we have P hello, P hi, P6, and P9. Now, what you notice here is that we are repeating ourselves four times P, 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 P. We could do this in a much simpler way since we have already established that when you have an array of items react is going to combine those items what we can instead do is this we have these four items we can now use the dot map method of arrays we can map each item for each item in our callback function we're going to return p we have our curly bracket again which means we want to add a javascript expression and the expression we want to add is this item variable and now you see we have hello hi six nine all of them having p if you come here to the DOM, you see you have P, 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 and P. So here we have been able to use this map function to render this list based on our callback function here. Now, just as you know with JavaScript, if you have an array, let's say that array has one, two, three, four, you can create a new array from the existing array using the map method. So here we have r.map and then we can say norm and then we can say norm times two. This is going to return a new array to this variable and then new array is now going to be two, four, six, eight, which is a map of all these items multiplied by two so because this returns a new array two four six eight we can apply that same concept here so here we're saying all of this then we map it and then we return this so this is going to return the same thing as p hello p hi p6 and p9 now i can do whatever i want to do on this p i can add a class name i can add an id so this is the concept of rendering list where you have a list and then you can loop through that list generate a new list of gsx elements and those gsx elements will be combined on the dom now you're probably thinking can you also use for each well you cannot use for each the reason for that is for each does not return a new array if we used for each here this is only going to run through each item in this array but it is not going to return anything to new array that means in this case new array is going to be something like undefined because nothing was returned from here so that is why you use array map you can also use array filter because array filter returns a new array but that new array is going 
going to be based on some condition. So if you have num is not equal to 1, then new array is now going to be 2, 3, 4 because our condition says filter for the values that are not equal to 1. So you can use filter, you can use map. What is important to know is you can only use array methods that returns a new array. So coming back here, you can see nothing shows on this place and if I check here, you can see that the div is empty. That's because for each doesn't return anything. So but if we use map, now this is going to return a new array and then we now have all of this. Now one more thing you need to know when using rendering list is that you must specify a key prop. So if you come to this console here, you can see a warning that says each child in a list should have a unique key prop. This means that each child, which is this P here, it needs to have a key prop. This key prop is very important when it comes to rendering list because considering that the items in your list can change, React needs a way to know what items have changed. If you don't use a key prop and maybe you modify any of these items which affect what is rendered, React would find it difficult to know which item in this list has actually changed. But by specifying a key prop, which which gives each of these items a unique identifier that way react can know what has changed in a separate video i'll go into more detail on the key prop and show you why it is relevant but for now just understand that a key prop is important now for this key prop you need to specify a unique identifier so here all our items have different values so we could use the item itself as a key since all of these are different and they are unique it satisfies as a key so you could do this or another thing you could do is instead of returning an array of just values you could do something like returning an array of objects all right so here we have an array of four objects each of these four objects have an id and a value so here for this key i can now use item.id because all these ids here are unique and then for the item i can use item.value and now we get this and if you refresh you can see in the console we don't get that error anymore because we have now specified a key prop now that we have seen the console Concept of rendering list let us now apply that same concept to our pricing card now the first place we can use rendering list is in the pricing card component you see that for the benefits we repeated ourselves three times we have this first li we have this second li and we have this third li here all of these li's are doing the same thing the only difference is this value this one says email cost support this one says one year access this one says up to 10 users now the problem with repeating yourself multiple times like this is that let's say i want to add an extra class like class because i added it on this li i need to come to this second li add the class i need to come to this third li add the class you see it makes things harder to manage so instead what i can do is a rendering list so here before i return my gsx i can have an array of items called benefits now i have this benefits array i can now come to this point here i need my curly bracket because i want to use a javascript expression and now i can say benefits dot map and then for each benefit in my callback function i'm now going to return something so now i can return only one of this li so i'm going to take this from here and paste it here and i can remove these other li's and instead of putting up to 10 users here i'm going to put benefits and now you see i get the same thing up to 10 users email support call support one year access and now if i need to add an extra class i can just add class once i don't need to add class in three places since i'm using a rendering list here and all of them share this code i can just change that code once so you can see how rendering list allows you to reduce repetitions again i need to have a key prop you don't need to add the key prop on the img you need to add the key prop on the parent element in this case the parent here is the li the img is the child and this is also a child so for the li i can now add a key and in my case i can use a key of benefits because all the benefits benefits here are unique if we had one year access two times then it would not be wise to use this as the key because this is not unique but because everything here is unique we can use the benefits as the key now we have this for our rendering list let's see another place we can apply rendering list so coming back to app.gsx you can see here we are repeating ourselves three times we have pricing card pricing card pricing card but we can use a rendering list to fix this so above here 
we can have an array called cards. All right, now I have my three objects in these cards. This is the first card, label price, image, image alt. This is the second card. This is the third card information here. And now I can come here and then I can have my curly brackets cards.map. And for each card, I'm just going to return one pricing card component. So I'm going to put that here. And now I can remove these two from here. Now for the label, instead of putting the normal hard coded string, I can put the card.label. Remember, each of the cards have a label property. I can put card.price. I can put card.image. I can put card.image alt. And now we have this and we get our same card back for the startup for the pro for the enterprise but in this case we have used the rendering list to re reduce the number of lines of code we had where we're using pricing card three times and now we're only using pricing card which is going to be used for all the items we have in the cards again we need a key prop now in this case what can we use for our key well we can use the label since all of the labels are unique if things aren't unique you can introduce an extra id property but since the label is unique in this case we can use card.label and now we get all of this now one more thing that is missing is that all our cards have the same benefit so how do we change that well we can come to startup here and we can have a benefits property which is going to be an array okay i've repeated it for the remaining items so the startup has these benefits the pro has these benefits and the enterprise has these benefits so coming back here i can now pass those benefits so i have benefits and then i put card dot benefits and now i need to tell my pricing card component to use the benefits so here i can have benefits and now i can remove this line since the benefit is now coming in as a prop i can remove this line here so this benefit is coming from here and it is coming for each of the card you can see that for the free this has its own benefits, unlimited downloads, email support, limited access. For the second card, up to 10 users, email support, one year access. And for the third card, unlimited access, on demand requests, lifetime access, just as we have it here. We're going to be using one component multiple times. Instead of writing that component five times, you can just put the values in a list in an array and then you can loop through that array and only use your component once. So I hope the concept of rendering lists in React components now makes sense to you. There is still more work we need to do on our project for example you can see the startup has this purple team the pro has this orange team the enterprise has this light blue team but that is not the case here so we're still going to improve upon this in the next lesson and in the next lesson we're going to be looking at an interesting concept which is composition of components